Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name's Nehemiah and today I am really excited to give you a sneak preview at the grail of all grails, the knife I traded five knives to get the funds for. This is the CKF Snack, Snack Tan is the designer, Terra. This is a really, really, really interesting knife, and I'm, I'm really excited to give you a sneak preview. So I literally just got it today. I was going to do an unboxing type of a deal, but as soon as I saw this package and a bunch of Russian writing, I just had to rush into the bag and grab the knife. So I've already taken it apart. I put it back together. It's all lubed up, ready to go. And I'm not going to do a review in this video, just a preview, because I know, I know, I'm totally biased in favor of this knife. You know our old friend Cognitive Dissidence. I paid $1,200 for this knife. And so in the honeymoon period, I know I'm going to be tempted to just say this knife is amazing and overlook all its faults. So I'm going to spend more time with the knife, even though I'm really excited about this and it's something I want more than I need. I do want to give a fair and balanced review. So once I feel like I'm in a good headspace to do that, I'll throw out the review. But for now, we're just going to drink it all in. Oh, and I also take this moment to remind you that all my videos are in 4K. And if you're on a Mac, you need to not use Safari. Otherwise, it won't let you bump up the resolution. So maybe Firefox or Chrome or something. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this knife. So I got the Amethyst Timascus which is uh, really striking. I, it's a little bit more bright and happy than the normal Timascus with the dark oranges and stuff. This, uh, I think both look good. I just, I don't know, this spoke to me, kind of a happy sky blue. And really, really good job. Like comparing this to my Olamic Busker, just the detail is there. There is zero open gaps on the inlay. It looks basically perfect which is awesome. This is a kind of Warncliffe sheep's foot type blade. It's made out of M390. And you'll notice they'll have a, a near mirror finish. There's the camera looking back at us. And uh, man, they did a really, really good job on the blade. I think this is probably my one of my favorite blade shapes. It has a little bit of a point for when you need it, but just really, really good geometry for like slicing you can see my eyebrows there for a second this the sucker is really 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 finely finished and you're gonna be looking at this pivot and you might be a little confused so this knife has a trick up its sleeve so down here at the back of the knife if you push down on this i might close the knife to do this you push down on the knife and then this pin Let's see if I can poke something into it. Yeah, we'll see. I think I can do it without. Yeah, there we go. So you take that pin and you can just pop it out. And now the clip turns into your wrench. OMG, you can break this sucker down with literally zero tools. I've already done this. It's very easy to get in there. I might do a separate breakdown video of the disassembly it's a lot more interesting than most disassembly videos but uh comment in the section in the comment section below if you if you want to see a disassembly video i might uh might do that in a separate video just so people can pass it if they want to but there's some really cool innovation going on here so if you look kind of down here at the knife we can open the knife it's a front flipper also has the opening hole or apparatus the <clears throat> interesting that thing that's going on here is there's two liner locks, you might say. Not a lock, but two liners. Both have detent balls on them. So this one on the clip side of the knife is just always pressing down on the blade with its detent ball. And then this one is like a normal detent ball. You can see there. And it doesn't go quite as high because it needs to come off the blade to lock up. So what happens is you have this like buttery smooth kind of pivot and it, it's got like equal pressure. Like normally you'd have the lock bar just pushing on this side. And so the whole blade is just got pressure to one side. And that's why it's so hard for a lot of knife makers to make their knives centered because they basically have to make it 
not centered, and then this lock bar pushes it into its center position. This is different. This just has equal tension on both sides, pushing on either side of the blade so that the pivot and the bearings keep it centered. And even when the knife is closed or open, it's going to be centered, which is really, really interesting. There's multi-row ball bearings in there with a steel uh, cage for them. And man, it just everything about this knife is perfectly tuned. The tolerances on this, I, I will say, are better than a Sebenza. If you're going to find a Sebenza that has an issue with it, you probably won't with this. Um, obviously, I only have one knife that I've gotten to test out. But the way that everything fits together and just locks in place and it's so solid is just very satisfying. Um, the backspacer kind of lifts up like a hood almost. The... <clears throat> stop pin here is like a pivot for that backspacer to come up. It's just really, really unique and uh, obviously keeps the knife centered, which is cool. Like I said, both of the lock bars can come out very easily. There's nothing holding them in there. It's just kind of a little, I don't even know what you would call it, hinge, you might say, um, that kind of locks them in place. So you could take the whole thing apart and put it back together with literally no tools whatsoever. You don't even need a credit card. You're using this for everything, and it just kind of puzzle pieces together. Really, really, really awesome. Front flipper, I need to get some practice on the front flipping. It, 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 yeah, you can see that was not great. But in general, even if I was good at front flipping, I think I just prefer the spider flick type of a deal to open a knife anyway, and it does that great. Uh, really easy to disengage the lock bar, and once you get it over that detent ball, it shuts with ease. Very smooth, very, very smooth. The detent is like perfect to where any, any softer, and I might be a little bit annoyed by it, any harder, and I don't think I would be able to open it ever with the front flipper. <laughs> once I get practice in, I think I'll be able to get that, get that down. No problem. So that's it. I don't want to get too far into it. I'm What I'm doing right now in front of your eyes is kind of my only experience with the knife. So I do want to have a little bit more time with it before we start handing out our verdict on how good this is. It's a $1,200 knife, obviously. So a lot of you are just going to scoff at this and not even look at it or care. I get it. I understand, you know, the more you're in this hobby, the more a $200 knife seems like a budget knife, which is just nuts when to a normal person, $200 is outrageous for a knife. And everything's relative. $1,200 just bumps everything up. So I get it. But just drink it in. Live vicariously through me spending my, dumb, my money on dumb stuff. So you get to enjoy it in 4K. So it's like you're there. Just kind of stick your nose down at your video and it'll be like you're here. I have another review of a knife that I'll put out before I do this one, and and then I think I'll be ready to do the review on the the CKF Snack Tan Terra collaboration. Really interesting knife. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.